Hi, I'm Lisa Prather, and welcome to The Voice of Health with our host, Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where lives are changed every day through the natural approach to health care. Today we're talking about essential vitamin D. It's essential for the body. It is. Yeah, it's essential of, for a lot of things. A lot of people are talking about it. So why is vitamin D essential to our bodies, Dr. Prather? Well, it regulates the minerals of our body, uh, especially calcium and phosphorus, which are important for our function. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, the body likes the blood plasma levels of the calcium right at 10.0. It doesn't do well if it goes high, and it doesn't do well if it goes low. And vitamin D, uh, along with the parathyroid, has a tremendous amount of regulation along those lines. And so it's essential that we get uh, all of the vitamin D we need. And then vitamin D uh, will regulate the the calcium, the phosphorus, and all the other minerals. But it also has a big effect on our hormones. So you can't truly have a well-balanced hormonal system. And you can't have the hormones that you need unless you're, if you're deficient on your vitamin D. It also is important for kidney function, uh, your bowels. Uh, your immune system is very dependent on the vitamin D. Uh, how you sleep. Uh, the nervous system also has a tremendous amount to do with it. And then also your mood mm. has a huge effect on uh, uh, by vitamin D. That's an important one. But uh doesn't sound like too much, does it? <laughs> <laughs> so basically almost everything has a has a tremendous amount to do with your vitamin D levels. Mm-hmm. Well, how were we meant to get our vitamin D? Well, how we're meant to get our vitamin D is through sunshine. Mm. And uh, there, is a, uh, there is a mechanism that we can make our vitamin D. And so what happens is cholesterol goes up to the surface of the skin and then through a, a very complicated process, which I won't go through, <laughs> uh, it uh, is started in the skin, uh, goes to the kidneys and liver, and then circulates through the body and is eventually made into the active form of vitamin D. Um, it, it can also be caught, got from uh, other food sources. Uh, but uh, it all has to be from animal sources. You can't really get it from a vegetarian diet. So if you're getting oh, it from there. But sunshine is really where we were made to get our vitamin D from. And uh, it's the perfect vitamin D for our system if we can get it through the sunshine. So that's why we like going south in the winter, right? <laughs> well, you know, there... Good there, luck with that in Indiana. There is a, uh, a very definite pattern on uh, how vitamin D, uh, your levels of vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So, you know, during the summer, your levels of vitamin D go up, kind of reach its maximum, you know, towards the end of fall, and then it starts to decline. And then about the time that the sun starts coming out again, uh, we're really, really low on vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's why people have... Uh, oftentimes, people can, you know, if there's, if it's pr- kind of a prolonged spring, people get really antsy, you know, where you're not getting that good weather that you're mm-hmm. supposed to get. Mm-hmm. Uh, people Which start getting kind of, year. yeah, kind of getting uh, a little irritated. Mm-hmm. Uh, that mood, uh, infections start to increase. So uh, that's that's a big thing. And, you know, one of the things is flu season mm-hmm. is during the, the fall and winter. And uh, they say that there's a very strong correlation between uh, the the reason for that is because we don't have the strong sunshine. So that cuts down on our immune system. That's why flu season is during the time it is. And you said the the vitamin D deficiency uh, decreases the immune system? It does. Mm -hmm. It does. Very, very dependent upon the vitamin D levels in our body. Now, you were looking at me on that that mood thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've talked about, you know, it's like, well, will we ever get any sunshine here? Yeah, I'll take cold with the sun any day right? over warm and no sun. Yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. need that sunshine. So what effect did vitamin D have on skin color? Well, you know, uh, we talk about the uh, the vitamin D levels. And if you are near the equator, your skin gets darker because you don't, you're trying to regulate the amount of vitamin D that you get. So skin color is completely dependent and is designed to absorb vitamin D. 
So that's why people in the uh, in the colder areas up north, or, mm-hmm. uh, farther away from the uh, sunshine, uh, develop light skin, so that they can absorb the vitamin D. Then you, it starts getting darker as you go down to the Italians. It's a little bit darker because you don't need quite my as much people. vitamin D. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, my people up in the British Isles and, uh, are really really white because uh-huh. they don't get a whole lot of uh, vitamin D. Uh, so they have. They, they kind of maximize their vitamin D ability to absorb. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, if you are dark-skinned mm-hmm. and you don't have a whole lot of uh, exposure to the sun, your chances of having vitamin D deficiency are much, much higher. Mm-hmm. So, you know, vitamin D has a tremendous amount to do with the skin and the skin color. And we find that uh, a lot of our uh, patients who are have darker skin, mm-hmm. their vitamin D levels really need to be checked on a regular basis. And it has a great deal to do with a lot of the problems that are associated uh, with uh, uh, people of darker skin. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we find is that um, African American um, uh, people have a lot of kidney problems uh, with hypertension, mm-hmm. with uh, heavy amounts of cardiovascular disease. And a lot of that has to do with their vitamin D levels. Interesting. So when did vitamin D deficiency start to be a problem? What they were looking at uh, is in the 1890s, we started to become industrialized. And when you start to become industrialized, you're not required to be outside. And there was also a lot of uh, uh, emissions. So in London, uh, they were developing rickets. And rickets occurs because of extreme low vitamin D. So the, the, they, uh, you, you fail to grow, uh, you have deformities in the, uh, in the bone, skeletal structure, and it becomes a real problem. So they had this big push trying to figure out what, was going to, what, what the problem was and uh, what was occurring and why people were having these issues. And it was because they were out of the sunshine. You know, people wore more clothes. Uh, you know, if you go back in, in time, uh, to do different types of work, uh, you, you know, even like uh, biblical times, mm-hmm. you know, uh, conservative things like that. But it talks about when Peter jumped into the water to go see Jesus because he had resurrected, uh, he was naked. Mm-hmm. So he was out there fishing uh, without any clothes on. And uh, they mentioned that in the Gospels that he jumped into the water and then uh, swam in. Huh. So, so they're just walking around naked. <laughs> yeah, he was he was working naked. Getting his vitamin D. He was getting his vitamin D. So uh, you know, there you go. But uh, in uh, Victorian England, uh, there was a lot of a very conservative dress. Everybody had to wear lots of clothes over their their covered system. everything. Yeah, covered everything. So there was a, a huge amount of conservatives. You know, you couldn't. Uh, a man would be arrested if he didn't have a shirt on. For indecent exposure. Hmm. And women couldn't even show their ankles. Wow. So, you know, there was a lot of, it was very conservative. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they didn't work outside. There was, uh, most of them worked indoors the entire time. And then they also had pollution. So uh, rickets was a major problem at that time. So, you know, trying to figure out what was going on. And so they did a lot of research. And then uh, finally came up with uh, some solutions. Interesting. So what solutions were found for vitamin D deficiency? Well, the big thing that they found was cod liver oil. Hmm. Cod liver oil became kind of like a a staple at that time. There was an English gentleman who found out that cod liver oil would take care of rickets. They didn't know why. But they knew that. So, you know, the whole thing, you, you hear about these old stories or these, these you know, you got to take, forcing the kids to take their cod liver oil. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember. Well, we, yeah, our kids grew up with it. Right. In liquid form. Yeah. And uh, it was very important because it really helps out with upper respiratory infections. A lot of kids were, uh, uh, had low growth. Uh, they had a lot of uh, uh, infections because of their immune system, and there was a tremendous amount of death. So what they found was that if they gave cod liver oil, then uh, they didn't develop those problems. In the 1920s, they finally discovered vitamin D and how it was working, and it was the vitamin D in the cod liver oil that was uh, making the big difference. Mm-hmm. 
So voila, then we have the <laughs> discovery of vitamin D and was able to solve a major health problem that was uh, occurring in the world at that and time. And that was in the 1920s. 1920s and when, when they discovered vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, uh, 1920s was when they discovered most of the vitamins. It was sort of a revolutionary time in healthcare. And they felt that that was going to be the big thing to help to cure and uh, get mankind into a much better position. And did a lot of families, that was a staple, uh, cod liver oil. Cod liver oil. Have it yeah. after their meal or before yeah. their meal. Now, one of the things that they did at that point was they then uh, started to fortify, especially in America, fortify milk, vitamin D fortified milk. Okay, when we come back, we're going to talk more about that. Essential vitamin D. You can win a free 60-minute massage in a relaxing spa at the Prather Practice. Each month, we have a drawing to give away a free massage to one of our lucky Facebook and Twitter fans. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. How is TMJ treated at your office? Uh, one of the uh, most important ones is actually uh, some jaw adjusting. The technique that I actually use, I invented, that needs to be extremely light adjustment. If you come in hard on the jaw, it's a very mobile type of a, of a joint. Mm -hmm. So the angle, the pattern, and just the amount of right pressure, it's a very gentle type of thing. As a matter of fact, people just sit there and say it's sort of like a puff of air. You know, I mean, did you actually do anything except you know, all of a sudden, all their pain's gone. Yeah. Matter of fact, the TMJ is uh, uh, one of the major causes of uh, headaches. There's a different pattern if it's cervicogenic and jaw on the headaches. By the time just we do the consultation, I usually know where the headache's coming from. It also has a very strong emotional effect. There's actually oh. a direct nerve that goes right to the brain from the jaw that goes directly to the emotional center in the brain. The emotions can affect the jaw, mm -hmm. and then the jaw can affect the emotions. Jaw problems of any type of musculoskeletal pain, uh, people commit more suicide from TMJ. About 80% of everyone's going to have TMJ sometime in their life. And many times people aren't even aware that that's where their problem's coming right. from. One of the things that you have to do is is the neck has to be fixed to be able to fix the TMJ. If you don't get the, the top bone called the atlas fixed, you'll never be able to fix the the TMJs. And that's something you do. That's, Your specialty we actually is have the a atlas. specialty on yeah. that. Mm -hmm. So but you can have TMJ problems and not have a neck problem too. Okay. But if the atlas is out, you're going to absolutely get nowhere with a TMJ. There's also a global type of a shift that occurs. The pelvis will actually shift. We've had people with elbow problems. We've had people with uh, shoulder problems. And I said, it's coming from your jaw. And they're like, you know, well, it doesn't hurt. Up How does that jaw. happen? <laughs> yeah. And so I go up there and adjust their jaw. And uh, I recheck their shoulder and their elbow. And, and I said, does that hurt anymore? And they go, no. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> been, I've had people working on this for two years and, and never gotten this far, and you do it in just like five seconds. Examination and diagnostics are absolutely so essential for really understanding the problem. If you don't know exactly what's going on, if you don't know what the cause is, then you can't fix it. Right. And when you know, it makes the treatment easy. Oh, yes. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. Have you ever been curious about how acupuncture can benefit your health? The Prather Practice has received the NDA List Award for Best in Acupuncture for two years in a row. And we've been rated the top acupuncture provider by Google+. Dr. Robert Prather is a board-certified licensed acupuncturist. He's earned a reputation for combining effective acupuncture-based techniques with cutting-edge technology to help patients with many conditions. Acupuncture is documented and proven to help with many health issues, including pain, allergies, addiction control, anxiety, fatigue, vision problems, infertility, and so much more. 
We even have needle-free options for those who are a bit squeamish around needles. Call the Prather Practice to schedule your appointment and experience the benefits of acupuncture for yourself. 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. And I'm feeling You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. Well, we're talking today about essential vitamin D. And Dr. Prather, before we went to break, you were talking about milk Mm -hmm. and fortifying it. And Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, one of the things that they discovered was that instead of, because kids don't really like taking cod liver oil. I don't know if you ever noticed that. So, well, we had orange flavor, so yeah, <laughs> that wasn't too bad. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it wasn't a real popular thing, and there was mm-hmm. a lot of jokes about it. Mm-hmm. So, what the federal government did, uh, and even over in Europe, is they decided to fortify the milk with vitamin D. So mm-hmm. uh, that was a big thing to make sure that everybody got their vitamin D as they should, and that made a huge difference. And interestingly enough, they're not even quite sure why. But if you put in uh, vitamin D in milk, it becomes 10 times better absorbed into your system. Oh, interesting. So Mm -hmm. it doesn't take as much vitamin D to get into your system because of the milk. Uh, And then, of course, milk also has the calcium, magnesium, phosphorus already in it. So it makes it a very, um, a very easy way to get vitamin D into the system. But again, it shows up, we, we don't think about vitamin D a whole lot, mm-hmm. but it was a major, major issue and had a big health impact, mm-hmm. you know, huge Im- health impact. And getting that into the milk uh, is one of the things that really helped out with vitamin D. Now, one of the things that people need to be aware of is they really need to watch their kids because a lot of kids now uh, have been shown to be uh, uh, dairy sensitive oh, and aren't yeah. taking that. Mm-hmm. So how do they get their vitamin D? And getting that checked, you know, is mm-hmm. a very important factor in keeping the health of your child up. Uh, well, actually, everybody's health is extremely important to measure their vitamin D level on a regular basis. Well, we do that through our Prather profile. Vitamin D is part of that. That's yeah. just a standard type of thing that we feel that everybody should have checked mm-hmm. uh, anytime they have a lab test, uh, just to see where it is because of the importance. And if you're a vegetarian and you don't drink milk, your chances of getting vitamin D, unless you're out in the sunshine quite a bit, Mm-hmm. are very, very low because uh, you don't get, you get minuscule amounts of vitamin D in your diet unless you're taking uh, uh, fish oils, uh, salmon, herring, sardine, egg yolks, butter, and liver are the major areas that you get it in your diet. So at the Prather practice, when you have children that are low in vitamin D, yes. what are their options? Well, we, we give some vitamin D supplementation. We find out the best way to get that into their their system, and then we measure it and make sure that that's all set. Because there's some that are liquids, right? Yes, there, yeah. are, there are a lot of ways to, to get that into the system. And, of course, one of the easy ways you can do is uh, t- all you need is for a, a baby or a child Get them out there into the sunshine about 20 minutes Mm -hmm. a day, and they can usually get all the vitamin D that they need. Mm -hmm. So making sure that your child gets out there and get the liquid uh, sunshine uh, vitamin. And that can come through, you know, the glass patio door, right? Just There's a little bit of Mm -hmm. of a—it's the UV light. Uh, from the sun that really, really works. It's best to get out there completely into the sun if you can. Yeah, but not in the middle of winter. Right, right. (laughs) Well, even if you can get their face in their hands. Yeah. Sometimes that can actually do. So getting outside during the winter, as long as there's sunshine out, it's a great thing to do. So is vitamin D deficiency common now? Vitamin D deficiency is is very common. One of the things that there was a, a... uh, you know how there are different fads that go mm-hmm. through. I mean, right now it's CBD oil. Everybody's doing CBD oil. Uh, but they also were, the vitamin D was, there was some research that came out and every doctor was putting out vitamin D. 
uh, you know, without even really checking on it, which isn't good. Uh, you mean checking their blood work? Checking on their blood work to see the lab tests. So everybody was getting vitamin D because they were talking about how excellent it was. So everybody had this big vitamin D craze. And uh, it, it, it is absolutely true that almost, uh, you know, when we do the, the vitamin D testing, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the majority of people who actually show up low on vitamin D. You know, it's unusual to find someone who uh, is normal and we go through, and your vitamin D is low. Yeah. So we need to bring that up. And there are different levels that we get on people. Uh, some of them are very shocking levels, and it's amazing how much of a health change that occurs as soon as we get their vitamin D level up. Interesting. Now, you said by, you know, putting someone on vitamin D without checking it can be harmful. Yes. What, what do you mean by that? Well, vitamin D can be toxic. You, you know, this is this is something that uh, you can get a toxicity on. It's a fat it's, soluble. It's a fat soluble, so it can uh, sit in the system and cause quite a bit of problems. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to you don't want to be low on vitamin D, and you don't want to be too high on vitamin D. It's that homeostasis we talk yeah. about. Homeostasis, balance in the system, very important. So, is vitamin D supplementation something that should be encouraged? Vitamin D supplementation sh uh, should be responsibly encouraged. Mm, and you mean that by checking through right. blood work? Yeah. Uh, we had a patient who was very much into health, as I think about, mm -hmm. you know, that came into our, uh, into our office and was having some very serious issues. And uh, we sit there and did their blood test, and their vitamin D level was at a super toxic level. Uh, and we asked them how long they had been taking vitamin D in three years. They'd been accumulating it. It eventually resulted in a disease process. It had been recommended uh, before, and they had read all the studies on how important vitamin D was. And so they were going to be a healthy individual and go down and get their vitamin D uh, supplementation on a regular basis. Without having it checked. Without having any lab tests done. And you cannot do that. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to detox them on the vitamin D. Luckily, that had not become a, uh, a, a crisis situation where it could have been life-threatening. Mm -hmm. But we do take that seriously. And we don't encourage people to take vitamin D without having a blood test uh, to monitor how it's doing. And what level should it be at? Well, uh, the accepted norms is between 30 and 80, mm -hmm. according to our labs. Mm -hmm. uh, we like it, uh, you know, to get it around between the 40, uh, 40 to 50 range is our ideal. Okay, good. Well, can vitamin D be, see, you, you talked about it can be toxic if it's taken too high levels. Yes, if it goes above 150, it becomes a toxic level. And what, how does that manifest itself? Oh, now, consequences of high vitamin D mm -hmm. um, is uh, nausea. Uh, that was one of the things that this person was talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, anorexia. Uh, in other words, you, you can't, you don't want to eat. Uh, weakness, uh, headaches, and that was a big problem that we've seen. Uh, probably one of the first things we see is an increase in headaches. Uh, excessive urination. Uh, m m it can cause mental retardation. Wow. If you're taking it as a as a too high person, levels, too high of levels can actually damage the brain. Remember, it's very important for the nervous system. It's important that you don't go too low, but it's also important you don't go too high. Mm -hmm. uh, extreme digestive disturbances uh, it can cause atherosclerosis, uh, it can cause dermatitis, uh, and it can cause irreversible kidney damage. I have had a patient who came in uh, for treatment, and the cause of their kidney damage was. Uh, from taking too high of vitamin D. It uh, can also cause kidney stones, and it can calcify the soft tissue. Interesting. So you can get some really uh, serious types of uh, issues mm -hmm. uh, if, you're, if you're taking too much vitamin D. And do you find when people, these patients you're talking about that have come in, was that something they were doing on their own? Uh, well, uh, the one with the kidney damage was actually uh, prescribed by a physician. Okay. Uh, without so. doing blood tests. That was during the big vitamin D craze. Mm -hmm. uh, so that Every, and put everybody on vitamin D. Everybody was getting put without on vitamin labs. D without labs and without rechecking it. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, it is people who are deciding to do it on their own 
uh, who have read and in other words a little bit of knowledge can be dangerous mm -hmm. so what are some of the symptoms of low vitamin D well one of the things as a matter of fact we've uh, just had a patient uh, recently that had this uh, had a uh, vitamin D level of 8 which is and you say you want the level at 40 to 50 yeah 40 to 50 150 is when you start to get into the symptoms of the toxicity okay so between 30 and 80 is the the lab range that we look for mm -hmm. uh, we like it between 40 and uh, 50 right around in there mm -hmm. uh, 150 then you start to get some of the consequences of a high vitamin D so that's where you start to get the toxicity level and uh, that's when you have to uh, start to detox it out of the system but this uh, gentleman had a, uh, uh, a level eight on his uh, pretty low on his vitamin D, and his main symptoms that he was coming in was burning in the mouth. So the mouth actually burns. Wow! And, why is that? Uh, it, it is it, the the mucous membranes are affected quite a bit, wow. and there's there's a loss of calcium. Matter of fact, uh, the next step would be that the teeth start falling out. Wow. So, <laughs> it's not good stuff. <laughs> no. And uh, uh, he had actually been to six different doctors, even had been to Mayo. Mm -hmm. And they had not checked his vitamin D level, even with the symptom of burning in the mouth. It was wow. a main problem. So, anyway, uh, excessive sweating uh, is another thing that can occur. Uh, diarrhea. And, and interestingly enough, I've solved a lot of excessive sweating issues mm -hmm. uh, from uh, uh, Amish which is interesting because they always stay covered up mm -hmm. and they get that really low vitamin D, um, you know, when they take their shirts off or, you know, see their skin, they're, they're very pale. Very pale, yeah. And because they haven't been out there, uh, they, they don't believe in exposing the, the, their self to the sun. They, they're always very modestly dressed and it's not, it's not actually healthy. Mm -hmm. And uh, excessive sweating was a, a common thing that I've been able to solve along those lines. Diarrhea, again, whether you get too much or too little. Mm -hmm. Remember I talked about that there's a big regulation in the bowels. So the bowels are, uh, a lot of how, it, how the bowels will work is coming from the vitamin D. Insomnia, nearsightedness. Kids who have low vitamin D mm -hmm. develop nearsightedness as children. Mm -hmm. So getting a lot of sunshine, making sure their vitamin D level is up, that keeps them from needing glasses uh, as they're going along. Uh, that's why they always talk about kids who are inside reading all the time. Well, it's not necessarily always the reading. It's that they're not outside playing, getting mm -hmm. their vitamin D. Uh, nervousness, anxiety, uh, softening of the bones, rickets, uh, dental cavities. Uh, don't, uh, if you are low vitamin D, you're going to have problems with uh, your uh, teeth. And fatigue, uh, we've had a lot of people whose fatigue levels were solved by uh, getting their vitamin D level up. Okay, when we come back, more on essential vitamin D. Listen to the Voice of Health Radio on your smartphone or tablet on all of the top radio apps available. Tune in Radio, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. You can find these apps and more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. This is the Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. Laughter is the best medicine. And my leg, don't forget, was sickened straight out in this cast. And before long, he turned to me again and said, Did you break your leg? <laughs> I said, I didn't break my leg. I broke my femur. femur. And he said, huh. <laughs> so he turned to me and he said, Ma'am, I guess I ought to be embarrassed, but I don't even know where the femur is located. <laughs> I turned to him and said, you don't have to be embarrassed about that. You don't have to know where the femur is located because men don't have one. Are you frustrated by not getting to the root cause of your health issue? Are you tired of not knowing why you're always fatigued? Are you wanting to say no to toxic drugs? Have you lost hope? Are you just tired of being sick and tired? At the Prather Practice, we want you to know that we have the answers for you. We offer the alternative to the disease care model. We are the drug-free model to health and wellness. At the Prather Practice, we look for the underlying cause of your health problem and not just the symptomatology. Through thorough diagnostics, we find your individual health blueprint for your treatment. 
Where the disease care model is symptom-based, the structure function model we practice gets to the root of your health issue. The Prather Practice is the most comprehensive wellness center in the Midwest. Our integrated practice offers you the most treatment options to restore your health and your hope. Learn more about the Prather Practice by calling 317-848-8048 or learn more on our website at the Voice of Health Radio. About essential vitamin D. And Dr. Prather, should other vitamins or minerals be checked with vitamin D? Absolutely. As you would take vitamin D, there's an effect on the rest of the body. Mm -hmm. So it is a fat-soluble vitamin. So you need to have a balance on that, on your uh, vitamin A, uh, your vitamin E, and your vitamin K. And all of those work synergistically together. So if you take quite a bit of vitamin D without keeping a balance of the others, you can become deficient in those and uh, actually cause problems. What were the other vitamins? Uh, Vitamin A, uh, vitamin E, and vitamin K. Okay. And vitamin D are the uh, fat-soluble vitamins Mm -hmm. that are very essential, and they work very closely together. So one of the things we do is as we give vitamin D, we also check on those other vitamins and make sure that we're supplementing them as we need to. Mm-hmm. And then you also uh, need to watch the minerals. So you might, if you take uh, vitamin D into your system and uh, you start to go low on your uh, calcium, it starts to pull it out of the bone, can actually weaken the bone too. Mm-hmm. So you need to be checking on your calcium, your phosphorus, and your magnesium and make sure that those are balanced. Uh, so vitamin D can cause a... Uh, a weakening of the skeletal structure if you're not doing it right it should strengthen it but again it becomes very complicated Mm -hmm. you need to balance everything and it is a a definite homeostasis that you're trying to achieve so checking on the other aspects of what's affected by, by vitamin d so that's why really someone who is a doctor should be should be working with you on that Mm -hmm. and the importance of homeostasis, which we talk about all the time. Right, right. Good. Well, what role does vitamin D play in the immune system? Well, the um, one of the, the first things that shows up with the immune system is the, uh, is the upper respiratory infections, especially during the wintertime. Uh, increases quite dramatically if you, if you are low on your vitamin D. So if you're trying to get your uh, colds, flus, uh, and of, of course with the uh, tuberculosis was one of the big things that they had found, mm-hmm. the vitamin D, getting people out into the sunshine. Uh, tuberculosis takes off when you don't get a whole lot of sun- sunshine in a different area. And that was a big problem during the uh, 1890s that they were dealing with. But that was another thing that was taken care of by taking the cod liver oil. They saw a dramatic decrease So all upper respiratory infections definitely has a big effect uh, on the uh, immune system. Uh, The ability of the body to target different types of cells seems to be a very big factor. Also with the immune system, uh, you know, as you're working with that, uh, it has a big effect on uh, the ability of the body to uh, find and destroy uh, cancer cells. Mm. So the things that have been acknowledged is upper respiratory infections and then also having a, an effect on cancer, too. So does vitamin D help to prevent cancer? Vitamin D has been shown to, uh, to prevent cancer. Mm. Uh, colon cancer, breast cancer, uh, or uh, prostate cancer is also uh, shown to be affected by vitamin D as a uh, preventative type of thing. Uh, my feeling is that uh, the vitamin D levels, uh, those are the ones that have been shown mm-hmm. to have an effect on it, but I think all cancers are affected by the vitamin D levels. Mm. That's, yeah, that's serious. Yeah. It's so important. Can vitamin D be helpful with cardiovascular disease? Cardiovascular disease, absolutely. Uh, one of the things that occurs is that if the calcium phosphorus ratios are off in the system, you start to get hardening of the arteries. Uh, vitamin D has a great deal of effect along those lines and can keep that from happening. Now, if you get too high of vitamin D, it can also cause atherosclerosis, mm-hmm. arteriosclerosis, uh, especially of the aorta, uh, which is a major artery in the body. But also, uh, if you go too low, that can cause uh, a hardening of the arteries too. 
So you want to make sure that both of those are important. Also, the congestive heart failure. If you can keep your uh, vitamin D level up, it really seems to cut down on the uh, uh, the number of people who develop uh, congestive heart failure. So it's a very excellent preventative along those lines. So uh, you really want to try to keep that uh, uh, levels at where they should be. Uh, cardiovascular disease, number one killer, cancer is number two. So mm -hmm. uh, trying to keep that uh, all healthy is, is very important. I guess I didn't realize how important vitamin D is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's there's a tremendous amount of, of uh, things that are involved with that. And, and you know, and, and one of the big things that we've seen a lot is the uh, seasonal affective disorder, SAD. Mm -hmm. So that is a, a really, really big factor along those lines. Uh, if you have the, uh, the, the, uh, the SAD type of symptoms where you can... Uh, uh, start to get that uh, mood disorder, uh, especially over uh, the winter time. Uh, a lot of people get that. And if you can keep your vitamin D levels up, it really helps out. Uh, another thing that uh, people don't realize is weight loss. Vitamin D helps uh, to lose weight too. So that's great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you if you uh, are low on your vitamin D, then you can uh, start to put on weight. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, you know, checking that if you're trying to keep your weight under control, uh, vitamin D has a great deal of effect on that. The reason is, is because it goes and affects the hormones. Your thyroid levels, uh, we see changes on thyroid. Uh, we've had people who didn't do well uh, on trying to get their thyroid balanced. And once we got their vitamin D level balanced out, all of a sudden their thyroid levels were working fine. Wow. Yeah, it's so interesting how things work together. The, holistically the, it is and being able to look at all the different factors and knowing how everything works together is extremely important mm -hmm. so how is vitamin D tested vitamin D is tested through the uh, blood work um, that's the most accurate way and, and an excellent way to uh, to check it uh, and again looking at the numbers on that you can really tell uh, when you need to be taking it and when you don't uh, but again, uh, you also need to not only find out when you should be taking it, but when you should be stopping taking it. Mm -hmm. So making sure that that's tested uh, after a period of time and make sure that you're not going too high. And then if you have constant problems with your vitamin D level, you need to constantly be checking on that. How often would you say? Uh, you know, if people are, uh, there are people that we have that we're checking at once a month. Really? You know, just because we're trying to regulate it, mm -hmm. make sure we hit that optimum. Once we can kind of hit it, find out what, they are, what they're needing, then we can go longer. Mm -hmm. uh, I would probably, uh, I get my vitamin D checked at least every three months. How was yours last time? Uh, I, was, I, was, I was actually a little low. Uh, yeah. I was a, but not too much. I was a 28. Mm -hmm. And I would really like to see it more up in the 40s, and uh, between 40 and 50. Yeah, and I just had my blood work. Well, mine was kind of low too. Yeah, yours was twenty-two. Mm -hmm. So we needed to Do really jump up. Yeah, and of course you've got darker skin too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I belong more closer to the equator. Yeah, you, you need <laughs> you need you need your sunshine. <laughs> I do. I do. Are other lab tests important to get other? You know, to get with vitamin T D testing. Yes. I almost called yes. it vitamin T. Is there a vitamin T? <laughs> there is actually a vitamin T. But that's, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know soil. that. Yeah, yeah, it's an oil. So, yeah, oh. they, yeah. You would know that. I would know that. <laughs> so, uh, yes, um, uh, the, uh, uh, what was the question again? <laughs> are, other, are there other lab tests important yes. to get with the vitamin D? One test? of the most important is hair analysis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you need to see what's going on with the minerals of the body to know how to supplement that. If you're just giving vitamin D, you're gonna be throwing off the minerals if they're not balanced. So uh, hair analysis is extremely important because you wanna know what's going on with the tissue minerals. You need to also do blood values of the minerals too. So we always do magnesium, calcium, phosphorus just to see what's showing up as long as, as well as seeing with the tissue, then we balance those out. Okay. And then we can also do a, a blood test to see uh, what the vitamin E levels, vitamin K levels, uh, uh, vitamin A levels are so that we make sure that we're supplementing as that needs to go. 
Long okay, too. so recommending our Prather profile, which includes the vitamin D and a hair analysis, which we do at our office. Right. Okay, when we come back, more on essential vitamin D. Never miss an episode of The Voice of Health so that you can stay informed and empowered about your health. Get a podcast of our show automatically delivered to you every week by signing up for our show on iTunes. You can find that link on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. And don't forget, thevoiceofhealthradio.com has complete archives of all of our past episodes with an audio library of information to help you add more life to your years and more years to your life. This is The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather. The Voice of Health Wellness Tip with Dr. Robert Prather of the Prather Practice. Well, let's talk about the role chiropractic care plays in chronic kidney disease. Someone out there might say, what does that chiropractic have? Well, chiropractic have to, have to do with chronic kidney disease, mm-hmm. and, and that is one of the things that I tell all the patients who have that problem. A lot of the people who come in who have chronic kidney disease, the way that we figure that out mm. is because they're coming in because of low back pain. Right, what they think is structural, low right. back pain, which is more kidney issue. Sure. I, I had a gentleman who came in, says I've been to three chiropractors. They adjust me. They can't seem to do anything about my low back pain. I check him out, and I, I say, the back pain is not coming from your back. Sure. It's coming from your kidneys. Mm-hmm. You're, you're in chronic kidney disease. Let's do some blood work on that see what's going on. But in the meantime... There is uh, not only as we are chiropractors are we adjusting the spine, Mm -hmm. but we're also adjusting other skeletal structure, Mm -hmm. but we're also doing visceral adjustments too. So we actually do a kidney adjustment. Mm -hmm. What happens with the kidneys is they become inflamed when they're in chronic kidney disease. And when they become inflamed, they drop down because they put pressure and the kidneys will actually drop. When they do that, they hurt. Also, when they do that, they don't work as well. So one of the quickest ways that we can change some of the numbers on the chronic kidney disease on the blood work is we do an adjustment called a kidney lift. It's a non-painful type of adjustment where we actually That's lift. That's good you clarified that. Yes. Non-painful. <laughs> What are you, lifting my kidneys? <laughs> yeah, we lift the kidneys up into place and people go, oh, really? my gosh, my pain is gone. Mm-hmm. It, it just disappeared. It also, when I do that, we see a, a decrease in the blood pressure. Mm-hmm. So the blood pressure actually improves. And then we see on the urinalysis and on the, on the blood work, the numbers improve immediately. Now, there can also be neurological interference. The, you know, there is uh, different nerves that go directly to the kidneys, and that could be related to the spine. So doing those adjustments, we've also seen some very good changes in the, uh, in the function of the kidney. So there, it, the nerves control everything, so it's not just the visceral adjustment on the kidneys that we do, mm-hmm. but also we do the neurological adjustments if they are necessary. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this gentleman had absolutely nothing wrong, no interference with his, with his spine on the nerves going there. It was purely that the kidneys had dropped. Schedule your appointment at the Prather Practice, 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Or learn more on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com. The Prather Practice, restoring hope. It's a beautiful day. You're listening to The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather of The Prather Practice, where our mission is restoring hope to our patients. We're talking today about essential vitamin D, and I'm learning a lot, Dr. Prather, and it's very essential, vitamin D. Very essential. To our lives. Let's talk a little bit more. I think you brought up the food sources for vitamin D, which aren't many. No. No. No, there's a little bit in mushrooms, a little bit in veg- vegetables, but people who are vegetarian who don't get out in the s- sunshine mm-hmm. uh, or don't, don't drink milk really, really, really needs to look at their vitamin D levels. Also, people of color, uh, the darker you are, the more likely you are of being low on vitamin D. Because uh, skin color is an adaptation to vitamin D levels. Interesting. So it completely wow. controls it. Uh huh. So you talked about fish oils, too, important. Fish oils, very important. And you can get that from salmon, herring, sardines. 
Those are all good fish sources. I remember my dad would always be eating sardines. Yeah, and that was one thing that they used to do is it was mm-hmm. a health thing. So you would have your sardines or herrings. Men mm-hmm. would do that. They didn't know it, but it was basically for vitamin D because they found out that people who did that were healthier than others. Mm-hmm. So uh, egg yolks are a good place. Butter. Uh, best way to get it out of the butter is ghee butter. Mm, ghee we butter use has ghee a, butter. Has a higher level of vitamin D. And, and you can absorbent. get that ghee butter. We get it at Market District. Sure. Yeah. It's uh, excellent. Liver also is a great place. Liver is one of the very best foods you can possibly have for getting everything that you need. And it's very high in all the uh, fatty-based vitamins. Mm -hmm. So vitamin A, D, E, and K are all very high in liver. So it's a great place to get it. So eat your liver. And then fortified D milk uh, uh, has been a very excellent boon to mankind. So can vitamin D be reduced by drugs? Yes, uh, drugs can be an, uh, a very important thing. Matter of fact, uh, giving, uh, you need to, if you're on any pharmaceuticals, you should have a physician check to, because you can have interactions between vitamin D and many drugs if you're taking that. So being aware of, uh, of your pharmaceuticals and having that checked along with the vitamin D is important. But if you are taking cholesterol lowering drugs, remember, cholesterol goes up to the skin. Uh, hits the UV light and starts the whole vitamin D process. So if you are low on cholesterol, uh, you... Uh, you they know, don't even get to the skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it really, uh, if you do a study on people who are taking cholesterol-lowering uh, drugs, uh, much lower than the, uh, than the rest of their peers for their vitamin D levels. So if you are taking cholesterol-lowering drugs... Uh, checking on your vitamin D level is one of the most important things that you could possibly do uh, because it can really cause a, a, a very big problem along those lines. And quite interestingly enough, being low on vitamin D and we raise the vitamin D level up, all of a sudden their cholesterol level goes back to normal. Interesting. So one of the reasons that people have, what the body does if it's not if it's not getting the vitamin D level it should from the sunshine because of your own not getting into the sunshine, Mm -hmm. the body makes more cholesterol to try to have as much of it available if you do happen to get into the sun as possible. So uh, being low on vitamin D causes high cholesterol. And if you can get your vitamin D levels up, it is a natural way to lower, one of the natural ways to lower your cholesterol levels. Yeah, and we're not saying go out to your nearest vitamin store and buy some vitamin D and start taking it. No. You have to have the labs to check you it. You have to have someone who's knowledgeable mm-hmm. in working with that type of situation and looks at all the ramifications uh, that are involved in that. Mm-hmm. Sorry to make it complicated, but it is. Well, it really isn't complicated. You get the blood work, you know where you need to be. Um, we do the supplementation. How many different vitamin D supplements do we have? We found one that really works well, but we have many different ways to deliver it. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we uh, do just give desiccated liver. Uh, sometimes we give fish oils uh, to get the vitamin D level. Mm-hmm. Uh, it depends on uh, what level it is and how the person responds. But we do have a very excellent source of vitamin D. And for those who are really, really low, we have uh, pharmaceutical vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a lot of people who we have to write scripts because they're so low on their vitamin D. Well, I know. I'm taking it right now in capsule form. Yes. Yeah. So is vitamin D more important in the older population? Yes. Uh, As you get older, uh, your vitamin D levels usually decrease. So your ability to make vitamin D is... is, uh, So as you are older, uh, your body's ability to compensate for your mistakes uh, aren't as great. <laughs> so yes, vitamin D levels are always lower in the older population. Gives you more of an excuse to move south. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, they find that uh, people who move south mm-hmm. uh, live longer uh, because mainly because of the vitamin D. Mm-hmm. Because you have more exposure and if you have your vitamin D levels at a better rate as you're older, you cut down on the number of problems that you have. And so it, it is, vitamin D is a life extension vitamin. 
Let me repeat that. Vitamin D will make you live longer, and older people should always have their vitamin D checked. Mm-hmm. Uh, Is that older people like us? <laughs> <laughs> the older you are, the more likely you're low on your vitamin D. So really checking on that is, is very important. The other thing that uh, vitamin D has a lot to do with is falls. Oh. So balance issues. If people are, are having issues with falls, mm-hmm. uh, vitamin D has been found to be a very big culprit along those lines. Why is that? The uh, one of the the bones that are involved with the if you go low on vitamin D, mm-hmm. that starts to weaken and get uh, brittle are the bones in the ears. Oh, interesting. So uh, loss of hearing as you get older, oftentimes mm-hmm. is a vitamin D deficiency. Uh, loss of vision as you get older is oftentimes a, a vitamin D deficiency. Uh, balance problems, uh, inner ear problems oftentimes can be solved from vitamin D. Tinnitus, uh, ringing in the ears, oftentimes is a vitamin D deficiency. So it's fascinating, all the different types of things. We had a uh, gentleman who uh, was extremely fatigued, older gentleman, who came into our office who was really struggling with uh, just kind of keeping life going. And uh, he had fallen several times, which uh, he had, he actually had bruises when he first came into us. And he was like, what, what, every time that, you know, somebody said something. Uh, And they were like, you got to get your ears, you know, checked. And uh, it it wasn't working even with the hearing aids. So we got him on, he was, he again checked out. Now he was about a 12 or 13 on his vitamin D level. Okay. But we got him on vitamin D level and uh, it was, it was within two weeks as his kids were in here. I don't know what you did, but we got grandpa back again. Oh, you know, uh-huh. he's he's he was out playing with the kids, and we were all worried, and and he was running with them, and he wasn't saying what what. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, it's a uh, it mm-hmm. it's 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 very satisfying. Yeah, and sometimes it can just be a a, a very excellent. I had a, a, a Indian gal who came in with terrible bowel problems. Uh, a lot of uh, infections and, uh, well, a lot of, uh, you know, they didn't know what was going on, but irritable bowel, just like crazy. Uh, got her vitamin D level up and uh, went away. Mm. You know, we had talked about the whole thing. And by the way, with the bowels, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis almost always have low vitamin D. And if we get their vitamin D level, the, the symptoms go down. Mm. And if you're talking about neurology, Alzheimer's, MS, uh, all those different types of things has a, a. It's critical to make sure that you have your vitamin D levels to be able to function as as well as you possibly can. Because oftentimes, what happens is the vitamin D leads to an illness, mm-hmm. and then the illness you go inside, and people go to go to bed. They are not outside because they don't feel active, and then it makes the vitamin D level even worse. Mm-hmm. And and then they they don't want to eat as much they especially don't want to have herring or sardines mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know because they got bowel problems they got all these other things and then the vitamin d gets even worse and then you get into this That's vicious sad. cycle of going downhill um a tuberculosis clinics one of the big things that they found that was very effective was getting people outside to garden and that really really solved an awful lot of the tb problems interesting so that's the time of the year start making your gardens there you, you know, go walking wonderful very informative thank you dr prather on an essential vitamin d thank you lisa the prather practice is located at 8902 north meridian street on the north side of indianapolis just south of the i-465 loop if we can help you to achieve better health we'd love to hear from you Connect with our office at 317-848-8048. That's 317-848-8048. Join us again here next week or anytime on our website at thevoiceofhealthradio.com for The Voice of Health with Dr. Robert Prather.